I remember you saying at, at the conference um, you wanted to talk to multicultural organizations. You no longer want to just go to black organizations. So I want to talk a little bit about that. It's easy for me to talk to other African Americans because they know about the struggle. They're going through the same struggle and, and they understand what the struggle is. Um, but I noticed that you know, when I speak in a crowd of non-African Americans, um, people really didn't understand. They cannot relate to it. It's not until they continue to hear it over and over, until they see it on social media, until they see it in the news, that they realize this is actually happening. This is not just African Americans complaining about something, and it's really not legitimate. Our young men and women are being shot and killed, and nobody's being held accountable. Um, it's not always about what our children are doing. Sometimes it's about how that person with that gun is perceiving our children and, and, and will chase our child and follow and pursue and murder. Um, we, we, we still live in a country where we have people that hate you because of the color of your skin. And we have to say that because it's only through us saying it that we can get past to the next level, which is action, which is doing something about it, which is changing laws, which is bringing awareness, and all the things that encompass what we need to do as a country. I know you are pushing for the gun violence and getting the guns off the street. I remember uh, when we got word about Sandy Hook, um, we are the representative AFTs. And I was in a meeting and first he said it was one child, then he said it was 10, then it, we were all in tears by the time we found how many kids had been killed and the teacher uh, and what had happened at Sandy Hook. And so when Senator Feinstein asked us to come up and um, launch her bill for, um, to just go back to the um, bill that had sunset, the Brady Bill, mm -hmm. um, to get the weapons off the street. I was so sure that was gonna happen um, because they had killed so many babies, four, five, six years old, and they were white. Mm -hmm. uh, and I said, well, they're gonna change this law now. Mm -hmm. But um, we saw what happened. Mm -hmm. And I know your fight with the guns, so why don't you talk a little bit more about what you're trying to really do? Well, um, you know, I like you. I thought when Sandy Hook happened, wow, something's going to be done now. But then when Gabby Giffords was shot, and she's a legislator, right. nothing was done. Uh, nothing was done with Aurora. If our legislators are not willing to take on the responsibility, then we have to go to the source and the root of the problem, which is the NRA gun lobby, and understand how the NRA gun lobby has so much power and emphasis on what happens in this country with the gun culture. The NRA guns lobby, the gun lobby agenda is outfit every home with a gun. Permitless carry. Anyone should be able to carry a gun without a permit. Openly carry a gun. Anyone should be able to buy a gun without a bona fide background check. Gun manufacturers in this country don't need to be held accountable for the massive number of guns that they're producing that end up on the black market, that end up killing people in, in tremendous numbers. I intend to spend the rest of my life exposing this so people really understand why we have so much gun violence. Most people, and I, of course, too, and I'm not even sure Sabrina knew. We didn't understand what Stand Your Ground was when Trayvon was murdered. No. no. Most people in their respective states have no idea what Stand Your Ground is. They have no idea what's, what gun laws are on their books in their own states. These gun laws are being passed at the state and local level. So if you know who is passing these laws, these legislators, then you can vote them out of office. And people have to understand that they have a lot of power. Go to the polls. Vote out of office these legislators that are not protecting you. I think that what you said most importantly is getting our people out to vote. And that to that end, we have set up a community and engagement department to have our locals go out and work with the community on all issues. 
not just education issues or teacher issues or school employees issues or higher ed issues, but the community issues. Mm -hmm. And that we're gonna take the role of being in there and leading and trying to have those voices heard. Why Hillary? Because she's a very strong person. She's a very strong candidate. And so uh, she stood with us. And so we want to stand with her. As a, you know, and I'm very much a, a fact kind of fact finder and have always been uh, one that I really want to understand the issues. I don't ever vote for someone just because they sound good or it looks good or they're making good promises. I check the voting records, I do the research, and historically Hillary all along the way has really been um, consistently voting for legislative measures, even as senator, uh, that have been very helpful to you know my community, minority communities, and the nation at large. Uh, you know, she is the first candidate to even begin talking about the gun culture in this country. She has said very openly that she will definitely carry out the, exec the executive orders that President Obama has put in place for gun violence. And so I have no doubt that she'll do that. And she knows the issues, she knows the problems, she knows the crises that we're in in the United States, and she has a plan of action for all of it. Well, that's good to hear, you know, AFT endorsed, was one of the first unions to endorse Hillary mm -hmm. early on. And that's some of the reasons why we endorsed her, as well as her major role that she's playing in education and moving education in this country and moving forward, which we need for our students. Mm -hmm. right. um, and I would like to see a woman president. We would too. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I want to thank the both of you. It's been an exciting day for me to sit and li listen to you, and I tell you, I say it over and over again, I'm humbled by your strength.